There's a TV station that they all adore. But I have to go and watch it with the girl next door. Because my set set fire in 1954. And she insists that we watch it for he down on the floor. We do rude things, <laughs> almost hardcore. So, um, <laughs> Welcome to Gas Tank. My name's Rick Waitman. Over there, Mr. Tony Ashton. Our first guest tonight is Phil Linnett from Thin Lizzy. And when we asked Phil to come on the programme, he asked if he could bring a friend along. Now, we thought he meant his mother or something, but it actually is, uh, for those of you who follow the band, it's their new guitarist who's been with them just a few months now, Mr. John Sykes. Starting off with a track called Growing Up. Daddy knows something's wrong But decides to leave the questions Till later on And later on at the little girl's request That she go to bed early to rest Like a weeping willow Into her sleeping pillow she cries The little girl is growing up Oh, the world has fallen down I wish this hurting it could stop But she's only learning, learning Her daddy gets up late for work Got a cigarette hanging from the corner of his mouth He's late, he's missed that train again But he's gonna shout 
and found that when he gets to work, all his fears delivered with one blow. The boss says with a smile, I'm sorry, we'll have to let you go. The little girl is gone. This whole world has fallen out I wish this hurting it could stop But she's only learned
Now do we dig one? Who will let the door turn the wrong? For us. Do you think that we can trust it, trust it, trust it? Can we see the world and tell it? The magical
years ago, back in the late 70s, I had a great honour of playing with a band called, um, um, I called Yes. And on the tour, I made friends with a very smashing fella who's kind enough to come over from America and play with us on Gas Tank. Donovan. I just met about Saffron. Saffron's met about me. to bed That's the time You raise up your head That's your lot in life Lelania I can't blame ya Lelania Hard to talk Oh, so la di da Can your part Get much sadder That's your lot in life Lelania I can't blame ya Lelania 
run your hand through your hair. I'll watch you paint your face with despair. That's your lot in life, Melania. Oh, I can't blame ya, Melania. Hammersmith Odeon there was a concert entitled Heroes and Villains which our next guest uh, took it all by storm. He's done the same here during rehearsals today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Chris Farley. What's the river blue? 
Uh, many years ago when we were doing the, the Flamingo Clubs and all the other clubs in this country, one of our early influences uh, by a guy called T-Bone Walker, this is called Stormy Mountain Blues. Stormy Monday But Tuesday Is just as bad Years ago It's Stormy Monday
from the rapport that you have with Tony Ashton having him on his knees at the end of Stormy Monday. I've seen him on his knees before, but not actually playing. You've, uh, I found out you've worked together before. Oh, yeah, in the late 50s, we, we joined my band just for a little while. I don't know the reason why I left. I've forgotten. <laughs> you're, not, you're not going to tell us? I don't remember, no. It's just, I don't know what, what happened to him. I think at the time we were just uh, going through certain musicians because we were young then, and uh, mm. I think Tony sort of drifted in and drifted out, you know, and went to other bands. That's how it, most of it happened in those days. You were doing the clubs then, and that? Well, we were doing the, all over England, yeah, all the, like, Whiskey A Go-Go in Newcastle and um, places like the Flamingo Club. And um, Tony played with us at a Reading Town Hall with the Rolling Stones, but the, they weren't called the Rolling Stones, and they were somebody else in those days. Mm. I remember actually seeing on the, uh, this back in the 60s, when Paint It Black was out. Oh, yeah. Was you and Jagger on Ready, Steady, Go, weren't it, at the same time? Yeah. I always remember that. I'd like, in fact, there's a video floating around which somebody gave to me of, of the pair of you doing it, because you did it together. Yes, we did, yeah. I'd like yeah. to see that. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see Well, yeah, that. I can do you a deal on it afterwards, oh, if you like. Oh, certainly. That's fine. Anyway, after, after you did all the, you know, you sort of uh, drifted, didn't you? You went off to New York and lived. Yeah, for a while, for about nine months, and uh, recorded an album, but nothing happened over there. So I came back to England, and then John Eisman from Coliseum rang up and just said, would I like to join Coliseum? Which I said, love to because mm -hmm. it was a totally different band to what I've ever been with before mm -hmm. sort of very jazz inclined you know and uh, that worked great I mean I, th I thought we, we worked great with that band it was then for about two years and then um, I, I, they, they, he defolded the band up and then uh, Tom at Rooster asked if I'd like to join them and I wasn't doing Vincent anything. Crane yeah yeah Vincent yeah I wasn't doing anything at the time so I said yes yeah. so I was joined them for about a year I thought you know, it's not the sort of music I'm after. So I, I, I left and formed a band called The Hill, mm. uh, Peter Robinson and Paul Buckmaster and a few other people. We made a good album and uh, played for a little while, and then that, we drifted apart. I think Paul Buckmaster was into uh, Elton stuff then. You That's know, right, he was doing all the arrangements. Yeah, arranging for Elton, yeah. 
and um, and then we drifted away, and then I sort of semi-retired into the sort of uh, my business, military, yeah. military hire business and selling. And then um, I'd still played on and off with bands, you know, like uh, someone would ring me up, like Pete York and John Law mm. would ring up and say, do you want to do a month in Germany with us? And I said, love to. And I'd done that for quite a long time. And then I got involved in a car accident, which I was put away for about seven months. So mm. that was a, a long time. And then... I've been doing bits and pieces ever since. It's but then suddenly, last year, I mean, really, the one that really brought you back to notice again was the Hammersmith, that, which we talked about. In fact, I introduced yeah. you on that. I mean, that really... Uh, and then you come on this programme, you've worked over in Luxembourg with Diana Ross, and you've done right. so many things. Uh, and you're obviously really enjoying it. Do you wish you'd never actually been out of it for a bit, if you know what I mean? I don't mean out of it, out no, of it. No, I think it done me good to come out of it, mm -hmm. to, because, you know... I think I'm singing better now than I've ever sung before. Yeah, that's and, proven. Thank uh, yeah. And uh, I just listen to what music there is around. And I listen to what I can do, and I, I just got the needle and thought, I'd like to get back to show, you know, the people that... and people that have never heard me before, basically mm. like the Americans, and um, i just like to show them that it's something good here. Mm. There is. It's one of the things that's been nice about this programme. We've been calling up Ashton and myself, been calling up mates or uh, people that we never met but wa always wanted to play with right. and calling them in because and we've been surprised at the number of people who um, just really think that the whole of the music industry now revolves around sort of like the new wave larks and other things and there's a, there's a gross lack of musicians and the musicianship that's going around and so it's nice you know that people like yourself are coming back in and yes doing, you know. i agree yeah i think what would you like what are the plans for the future what would you like to do i'd like to form a great band and be su have successful records, and I like to crack America. That's what I want to mm. do. Yes, you you have in a strange way, haven't you? Because you're talking about the underground, the cult thing that exists in America. Yeah, it's strange. I get letters from guys. Like a guy walked in my shop last week and just said that uh, I've been waiting 15 years for this. You know, I thought I owed him some money to start off. With, you know, <laughs> he came in and said I've been waiting 15 years for this, and I sort of bailiffs, fuzz. No, no I don't look like fuzz. Adolf. <laughs> and he said. Um, Oh, I'm an American from Miami, and uh, he said, I've got all your records, every one of them. I said, oh, yeah, and he said, we have a club in Miami with 30 people meet every month, and we just play Chris Farlow records. And I said, that ain't me on. He said, no, 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 it's absolutely true. He said that, they're, you know, you've got this following. And uh, from other people I've met, you know, while I was at the Rolling Stones concert that day, you know, from America, the, some of the uh, musical people over there who mm. write about it, when they said, who are you, they, could, they didn't know me to look at, but when I said Chris Farlow, they said, good God, I didn't realise it was you. I've been following your career for about ten years, you know. And it's nice, because they said that you're very well known over there, mm. like Bruce Springsteen's one of your greatest fans. And I said, ah, get out you know, really, I mean, yeah. you don't... And they said, oh, no, he is. So it's nice to go over there. I want to sort of meet these people that like me, and like them, of course, yeah. and I want to... I'd like to sing and make some good music and show them that what... Chris Farlow and his band are capable of. It's nice to have you back. Don't go away another time. I sure hope to stay around a little while longer now. Nice one. Thanks very much. Thanks for that. Well, since talking to Chris at the end of you, we've been very lucky because a lot of out-of-work musicians, which most of us are, have popped in the studio to help out on the last number, <laughs> which include, of course, my compatriot in crime on the programme, Mr Tony Ashton. <laughs> and on bass, Mr Chaz Crump. And uh, on drums, the greasy what Tony Fernandez. And yet again, from the choir, of course, Mr. Rick Carter. And on this side, haven't you gone home yet? Alvin Lee. Thank you. And yet again, for the first time, who's coming again? Mr. Ian Pace. Hello, Ian. But of course, for the main man of the show, Mr. Chris Farley.
Keep up, keep up. What happened?